This is Plus TV Africa, and thank you for joining us on Off the Press, where we bring you the daily newspaper headlines, reviews, and analysis. And joining me for this this morning is a policy analyst, Ifi Oji. Good morning, Ifi. How are you? Good morning, Benny. Good morning. How are you staying safe? Uh, I'm trying to isolate. I'm trying to drink lots of water, and I'm just trying to uh, go through my spiritual side now. <laughs> and, and doing a whole lot of exercises also. Yes, I, I see you, you follow me on, on, the, on the, um, social media. <laughs> I'm a big fan. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the dailies this morning. We'll kick it off with the Punch newspaper. And the first headline in the Punch newspaper, petrol subsidy remover, a game changer, says the LCCI. And also, we killed 105 Boko Haram fighters in Yobi, says the army. Pray at home during Ramadan, Sultan tells Muslims. And Nigeria orders need $114 billion to fight COVID-19, says the IMF. Still in the Punch newspaper this morning, presidency bars ministers' orders Kiaris bury attendees from Vila. Lagos yet to reach COVID-19 peak, Commissioner for Health says. Test, South Africa, 114, 711. Ghana, 60,916. Egypt, 55,000. Nigeria, 7,153. Coronavirus with started journey to recovery, says Adeboye. And Rivers releases oil workers, Pangasin suspends strike. Oil slashes assemblies allocation by 30%. Lagos to pay Abule Ado explosion victim families. And bandits kill 47 Katsina villagers in multiple attacks. Confusion over alleged killing of man by Lagos hoodlums. And lastly, in the punch this morning, collaborators of Pardon Major release 20, 2002 presidential panel. Now, if you, wait, let, let's take it off from um, the, the presidency, um, barring ministers and others, um, those who attended Kiari's burial um, from the villa. Now, what was growing through your mind when you saw the, the procession, the interment of the late COS, I mean, over the weekend and the number of the amount of crowd that were in that interment what was going through your mind Ify? to be honest i was actually quite uh it's quite worrisome because i realized that all the uh protocol that we had they had they had put in place for us to follow as citizens of nigeria were not being uh, complied with and that is worrisome because at the end of the day they have to be seen to be leading from the front so if any of the ministers or any other attendees were actually from federal government or officials that had put together that protocol, then there would obviously be uh, some kind of accountability on their own part. And I actually think it's a good idea what the presidency has done so that that way others can follow. Now, the Commissioner for Health, Professor Ake Abaomi of Lagos State, has come to say that Lagos has not yet reached COVID-19 peak. Now, what, what is your concern? What's your worry about this? Given the fact that the numbers keep increasing daily and Lagos being the epicenter of this virus in Nigeria, the, the numbers are increasing. The deaths are also increasing. That's why we have numbers also of discharged persons. Do, do we need such yeah. statements yet from, yeah. from, the, from the Commission I, I, of Health? I think, no, but, I, but I think even though it may seem alarmist to most people, I think it's actually one of those things where, yes, the uh, data is very alarming, but when you look at it in, on, in the larger context of things, there are other countries that are going that, that have deaths of uh, tens of thousands on a daily basis, that have deaths on, you know, in, in thousands. And Nigeria, you know, we don't want to give people um, um, uh, false hope in terms of where we are with this particular uh, uh, this uh, particular journey with COVID-19. I think it's important for everyone to be armed with the facts and with the information. So them having, he, him raising that alarm, I don't think it's uh, out of place at all. I, I know, bearing in mind also that uh, the protocols that have been followed so far have not necessarily been, uh, uh, given the fact that six, I think it was in 80, 80 something, 87 or so uh, was the highest jump that we saw yesterday, at, at, at midnight yesterday, in terms of uh, confirmed cases. So that is just a sign of things to come from his own part, and he's only doing his job and, and give, keeping us informed. All right, we'll take a look at the Guardian newspaper. The first headline in the Guardian newspaper this morning, private hospitals impose restrictions on all patients. How bandits killed 47 in Katsina by police. Um, not so much of headlines in the Guardian, but let's take a look at that. And we know there were, there were situations um, where the NCDC had to put um, a restriction on private hospitals who were treating um, suspected coronavirus um, patients. Now, um, private hospitals are now imposing restrictions on all patients. Uh, how do you see this panning out eventually? Because I would have expected some sort of collaboration between the NCDC and our private hospitals, given again that we know we don't have enough testing centers. 
But um, a, a well-informed uh, medical practitioner did say that there are particular things that must put, be put in place and not hospitals can be used as, you know, test, centers for testing and also treatment. What are your thoughts, Ify? Penny, I think you make a very good point in saying that, yes, that there has to be more collaboration between the NCDC and our private hospitals. We obviously, from a federal, um, federal perspective, not we are not equipped to handle what is going on. And I think we should also uh, take a leaf out of the book of countries like Germany, who have very low mortality rates at the moment. And uh, when, you, when you actually do an analysis of what they have done right, and what we even also what we have done right within the short frame of time in Nigeria as well, you find that... Uh, yes, we're not allowed to have these hospitals as the key uh, treatment centers. But what they have done is they have found they have they have created a they have created a, a structure where the the federal government handles the more intense cases. And if you find that at, at some level that you are, you are exhibiting symptoms or you're manifesting symptoms of COVID nineteen, then you are being treated before it your 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 condition escalates. So so I think that. There is a there is a role for private hospitals once they have they do a, re a general review at the end of this week for uh, private hospitals uh, within the COVID-19 uh, scheme um, uh, solving the problem with COVID-19 and I hope that they are able to come to some sort of an agreement at the end of uh, uh, by, by May 3rd. Yeah, okay, now you, you're a policy expert, you're a policy analyst. I said this yeah. morning, and the total number of confirmed cases stands at 627. We have about 170 discharged with 21 deaths. What, what is paramount for our government to, to be looking into right now, by, by way of policy, by way of a policy framework? So what I think Nigeria will gain um, from at this exact moment is some kind of integration and uh, some kind of... Um, we need to have some kind of integration and some kind of, uh, you know, way of monitoring our, um, what's going on. And the way we can do that in Nigeria is, A, by improving our testing opportunities. Yes, Lagos has, has 20, 20 testing sites right now, but we can do a lot more. We also need to make sure, make it important, make it almost a, a rule of, or a matter of policy that we all have to be protected either with the personal protection equipment, if, even if it's as small as just having our masks and having our gloves. So when you're, when they're, when they're looking at the F, at, at general F palliative efforts, there should also be a level of a, 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 push, a, a component of it that is trying to also uh, be pre preventative for COVID-19. It's not just having them provide them with food for the general masses. That is one of the ways that other countries are able to uh, curb this disease as well. Just making those sort of things compulsory, making them as as a matter of fact rules to be got to govern people's movement during this period. All right, if you're OG policy analyst, thank you for your time and for joining us on All the Press this morning. Thank you so much, Penny, for having me. Right. My pleasure. And that's all we can take this morning on Off the Press. Join us same time tomorrow for more on Off the Press. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark. Do have a good morning.